from using poop to assist with birth to inserting fruit inside of women, <laughs> here are your top 10 dark literally, medical practices used on women in history. In our number 10 spot, we have female mutilation. This of course is one of the darkest topics on this list and that is why I had to speak about it first. It is something that is still practiced in many places around the world and it is deeply horrific to think about. Ancient Romans would put fastened clasps through the female of slaves to prevent any form of intercourse. Eventually, surgical infibulation of women became more popular. It was known as pharaonic circumcision in Sudan and Sudanese circumcision in Egypt. Religious groups and many other cultures still practice this today. In some countries, such as Egypt, medical practitioners assist with this, sometimes with anesthesia and sometimes without. And according to a Uganda nurse, the person who's performing the procedure will sometimes use the same device on up to 30 different potentially spreading disease. So these women not only don't have control over their bodies, but also they could be getting sick from this. Truly so devastating. Coming up in our number nine spot, we have fruit. Hear me out for a minute. Fruit is not dark, obviously. Fruit is delicious. I'm a big fan of fruit. But if I was told that I had to put fruit inside my reproductive parts, then yeah, I would certainly change my perspective on fruit. Just imagine how much that would hurt. Well, women once upon a time were encouraged by doctors to crush up juniper berries and smear them on their parts. The reason being that it was believed that the berries would interfere with impregnation and thus it would help prevent the woman from becoming pregnant. Apparently there are studies that have shown that the berries probably did interfere with conception but I mean I bet the burn or possible itchiness from the fruit might have made doing this not worth it. One can only assume. In our number eight spot we have Victorian explosions. I do not know how else to put this one so bear with me. <laughs> I'm going to try not to laugh as we speak about Victorian explosions. You'll understand what I mean in a second. Apparently at the height of the Victorian era, doctors would treat female patients by stimulating their reproductive areas to a point of explosion. <laughs> That's some great medical care right there. <laughs> but the reasoning behind it is a little unfortunate. Males thought that their female other halves were too emotional and this was done to treat female hysteria. Honestly, I think I speak for all females when I say this is a pretty good solution. <laughs> this was very scandalous back then and I'm sure there were some inappropriate stories that may have occurred with these procedures that were perhaps dark. Eventually, an electronic device was made that helped doctors so that they didn't have sore wrists. And then, as you know, these devices eventually became take home devices that a lot of people around the world own today. Okay, moving on. In our number seven spot, we have the skin of a pomegranate. I love pomegranates, but whew, not in this way. Another recommended birth control practice for you. This one might make you feel so uncomfortable that you'll want to throw on your warmest PJs, crawl into the covers, and watch Once Upon a Time all day while stuffing your face with movie theater popcorn. Oh, that's not what you do when you're uncomfortable? Just me then? Whatever. Apparently in ancient Greece, women were advised by their physicians to, wait for it, take the skin of a pomegranate, add water, and put it inside their reproductive parts. <sighs> Once inserted, they were advised to have a drink of honey water. Why? No clue. Honestly, this one feels like some man was angry at his wife and got his doctor to tell her to do something like this out of revenge and then she just told a girlfriend and that girlfriend told another friend until it began a full on trend that doctors were advising. <laughs> all in the name of preventing pregnancy. Yikes, so dark. You know when someone tells you that they're itchy and you instantly feel like you're now itchy? That's how I feel right now. <laughs> in our number six spot, we have giving birth. As you can imagine, giving birth is probably one of the most painful things a woman or anyone could ever go through. I wouldn't know because I'm not at that stage in my life yet, but I can imagine modern medicines such as epidurals and whatnot makes this experience a lot less painful. Once upon a time, the epidural did not exist Exist, and women had to fully endure the maximum amount of pain always. But arguably, maybe even more pain when I tell you about what they were encouraged to do. Are you ready? First off, they were encouraged to drink vinegar. Yikes, I can just taste it in my mouth. <laughs> 
The only thing vinegar is good for is fish and chips. Just put some salt and vinegar on my chips and I'll be in heaven. Apparently the mother would be given gemstones to comfort the child when it was born, which sounds awfully nice and annoying at the same time. Oh yes. Thank you, Doc, for these gemstones. I really feel it taking away my pain. Not. They were also encouraged to put on a holy girdle. Oh, and here's the grand finale. They were rubbed with eagle dung. Probably for luck, but I couldn't find any real reason. These poor mamas. In our number five spot, we have a medieval contraception. This next one is fascinating to me, as not only was this encouraged by medical practitioners, but it was something that a society believed as a whole during this time, men and women. It is certainly easier to get someone to do something if you convince them that it will help them. Anyways, in medieval Europe, the Europeans believed that a woman could actually prevent pregnancy if she wore male weasel reproductive parts around her neck or her thigh. Um, come again, Mel? Yeah, you heard me. I mean, I want to say that they didn't fully believe this and that it was just a sort of charm, but no, they did. Well, honestly, I can imagine that nothing would put you off a partner more than them smelling like a weasel's privates. <laughs> there were other birth control options you could choose from, though, such as donkey poop charms, or a specific bone from a black cat. And the cat had to be black, otherwise the charm wouldn't work. All the poor Salems of the world being used as charms. That's a Sabrina the Teenage Witch reference for those of you that don't know who Salem is. In our number four spot, we have poop for contraception. So we talked about poop being rubbed on women. We talked about poop being worn to ward off love interests. But we have not talked about poop being put inside of women. Gosh, I am so glad to be a woman in Canada in this time period, Lord. In ancient Egypt, the women were told to smear crocodile dung and honey inside and around their intimate parts to prevent themselves from getting pregnant. In the Middle East, they preferred elephant dung. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, the thought of this makes me want to vomit, but apparently the elephant dung may have worked as the poop has a higher alkaline pH and that would act as an effective spermicide, but some think that the increase in pH would have made it more likely that the female would have gotten pregnant, so honestly, who knows. Thank God that is a dark practice left in the past. In our number three spot, we have the stuttering solution. This wasn't just on women, but also men, but it needed an honorable mention because it is horrifying that this procedure was once practiced. In the 18th and 19th century, medical practitioners would perform a surgery called a hemiglossectomy where a portion of a patient's tongue would be removed. Why was this done? Well, it was believed to be the cure for stuttering. Your girl stutters like every five seconds. There are days when I film these videos and my mouth hurts and it's hard to talk. I honestly push myself to do them because it's a part of my job, but still, imagine if I was alive in the 18th century when this procedure was done. I would be missing a portion of my tongue because someone would have made me get this surgery by now. I'd be like one of the witches, actually all three of the witches from uh, Hocus Pocus when they Eight, they're okay, anyways. In 2022, when a person stutters, we chalk it up to anxiety or a speech impediment. Imagine going from the 18th century to now. Apparently, sometimes the patients would bleed so hard from this surgery that they would die. Wow. In our number two spot, we have the acrazer. The acrazer was a medical device used to strangle uterine and ovarian tumors as well as hemorrhoids. Well, I know what you're thinking. This isn't really that dark. In fact, it seems light because tumors are horrific and they needed to be removed, for sure. And during that time, they did what they could with what they had. It just feels dark because the idea of this device is terrifying and would certainly be dark if used today. Its chain was placed around the base of the growth and grew gradually tightened. Huh. This would cut off the blood flow to the growth until it dropped off or the chain would cut through the growth. Ugh. Apparently this was obviously painful, but not as much as doing it by hand without the device. Yeah, honestly, I bet you it was just as painful both ways, but this way maybe more because it would be, you know, psychologically traumatizing. I would definitely have had PTSD after this procedure if I had it done. In our number one spot, we have the treatment for insanity. We talked earlier about how doctors had come up with a solution to treat female hysteria, basically during that time of month when females would be extremely hormonal. Well, 
There was also another treatment for insanity, which was also used to prevent women from receiving any kind of pleasure. Yes, it was believed to cure nymphomania in 19th century Europe and the United States. I bet it also was a depopulation strategy and an act of power over women. Again, I am grateful that I will never have to endure what these women had to. What a crazy list, right? I'm Melissa Milotti and I hope that you have a good day, sir.